Hi, in this video we are going to see about acid-base balance, especially how acid and base balance is maintained in body fluids. Okay, so our topic for today is buffers in body fluids. So from this part, the usually asked questions are short essays like explain the buffer system in body fluids or uh, uh, explain the mechanism of acid-base balance in body fluids with special mention to henderson hasselbach equation. Okay, so we'll see what it is. So in the introduction of the answer, we have to write about the importance of acid-base balance. So we know that the normal pH is around 7.35 to 7.45. The normal pH of arterial blood is 7.4 and venous blood is 7.35. So this is the normal range of our body pH, pH of the body fluids. So the pH less than 7.35 is considered as acidosis, while the pH more than 7.45 is considered as alkalosis. So see, it is maintained into such a narrow range. So, it means that express concentration is precisely regulated. So, why should the body be so particular in regulating the express concentration? That is because it can cause changes in the excitability of nerve and muscle cells. It can influence enzymes and also influence the potassium levels in the body. Okay. So, that is why pH is highly regulated inside the body. Now, how does the body do it? So, the primary lines of defense against changes in the H plus concentration are or how the body tries to resist change in the pH are first buffer system in the body fluids. So, inside the body fluids, we've got buffers which will help the body to return the pH to the normal range. Okay. So, these play a very important role because they act immediately to correct the pH change. Next, we've got the respiratory system. So, the respiratory system has got the ability to flush out carbon dioxide. This in turn will affect the pH. So, by that mechanism, the respiratory system can bring back the pH to normal. Okay. And finally, we've got the renal system, which is much slower when compared to the other two systems, but they are, uh, they are useful in flushing out uh, the acids that can be produced inside the body. So, that will also help in maintaining the pH. So, these are the three different systems that are present inside the body to maintain the pH. So, here in this presentation, we will be seeing the first one that is the buffer system in body fluids. So, how does this buffers help in maintaining the pH? So, we know that the basic mechanism of a buffer is that they combine with an acid or a base. So, buffer is actually any substance that can reversibly, reversibly bind to the hydrogen ions that are present. Okay. So here you can see that this buffer, whichever it is, will combine with the free H plus and combine to form this hydrogen buffer. Okay. So basically, they've got three systems, three buffer systems present inside the body fluids. The first one is a bicarbonate buffer system. Then we've got the phosphate buffer system, and then we've got the protein buffer. So we'll see each one by one. So first, we'll see about the bicarbonate buffer system. So, bicarbonate buffer system mainly consists of two compounds. One is a weak acid that is carbonic acid and other is the base that is sodium bicarbonate. So, how is carbonic acid produced in our body? So, when water combines with carbon dioxide in the presence of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, we get what is known as a carbonic acid or H2CO3. And sodium bicarbonate is found in the extracellular fluid. Now, as I said, H2CO3 is a weak acid, which means it will be partly dissociated to form H plus and bicarbonate. Similarly, sodium bicarbonate will also be partly dissociated to form Na plus plus HCO3 minus. Now, how does this buffer system try to decrease or maintain the pH to the normal? So, suppose when I add a strong acid to this, suppose I add HCl. So, we know that HCl is a strong acid, so it will be fully dissociated to H plus and Cl minus. And now this H plus is going to change the pH. So what will happen? Our bicarbonate here will combine with this H plus to form H2CO3, which will in turn form carbon dioxide and water. Similarly, when a strong base is added, suppose I add sodium hydroxide. So this also is a strong base, which in turn will be dissoci fully dissociated to Na plus and OH minus. So this OH minus is going to make the body fluid more alkaline. So, what will happen? Our weak base will combine with this sodium hydroxide so that sodium bicarbonate is formed. That means a strong base has been replaced by a weak one. Okay. So, the next important buffer system is the phosphate buffer system. So, phosphate buffer system is mainly found inside the tubular fluid of the kidneys as well as in intracellular buffering. 
okay and mainly consists of again two compounds which are h2po4 minus and hpo4 minus one of which acts like a weak acid and the other which acts like a weak base so when a strong acid is added for example like hcl it will combine with that base that is na2hpo4 to form nah2po4 plus nacl okay similarly when a strong base is added such, such as sodium hydroxide the h2po4 minus will combine with sodium hydroxide to form nahpo4 and water so here also the strong base is uh, substituted by a weak one okay so this is how the phosphate buffer system will act so so far we have said that the buffer system basically consists of an undissociated acid as well as the conjugate base okay and we also know that the buffers they exist in a partially dissociated form that means at any time so, uh, there will be some ions which are in this undissociated form and there will be some in the dissociated form okay so in general we can depict the buffer like this that is ha will can dissociate to form h plus plus a minus of which this undissociated acid they, they can be called the protein donors proton donors because these will combine with the base to form water right whereas the dissociated ions can be considered as proton acceptors that means they'll combine with the acid to form the weaker acid okay so basically an effective buffer will handle ph changes on either side effectively so whether the fluid ph moves on to the acidic or the basic side an effective buffer will be able to return back it back to normal okay but for that the proton donors as well as proton acceptors should be in equal concentration that means the dissociation should be perfectly half only then the proton donors as well as proton acceptors will be equal so when does this happen now this can be explained by a henderson hasselbalch equation so in henderson hasselbalch equation as i said before we know that the undissociated acid can dissociate to form h plus and a minus right and there's a dissociation constant ka is called the dissociation constant and that is equal to the concentration of h plus into concentration of the anion divided by the weak concentration of the weak acid okay or in other words we can rewrite this equation like this that is ka into concentration of ha divided by concentration of a minus will be equal to concentration of h plus i've just taken the numerator and the denominator down okay now if i am going to apply log on both sides what will happen see here we've got minus log of concentration of h plus what is minus log of concentration of h plus it is a ph and what is minus log ka that is pka which means we'll get an equation like this that is pka plus log concentration of a minus divided by concentration of ha is equal to ph and this is called the henderson hasselbalch equation so now back to the question when does a buffer will be effective we said the buffer will be effective when the concentration of anions will be equal to or the uh, proton acceptors will be equal to concentration of the proton donors so so when concentration of uh, concentration of anion as well as concentration of ha is equal that means concentration of proton donors and proton acceptors is equal how what will happen to the equation pka plus log 1 is equal to ph but we know that log 1 is zero which means pka will be equal to ph that is a buffer will be most effective on either side when its pka is equal to the ph of the body fluid okay because that is the time that the concentration of uh, a minus and ha that is the undissociated and the dissociated ions will be equal so that is the time when the buffer will be most effective so what's the pka of a bicarbonate system the pk of a bicarbonate system is 6.1 where that of the phosphate system is 6.86 but hold on what did we say the normal ph of our body fluids are it was 7.35 to 7.45 right so which means the pka of these system is lesser when compared to the ph is it good or bad of course it is good because in our body the problem is that we are, our body has tendency to go on to the acidic side more okay because we've got volatile acids like carbon dioxide there are uh, fixed acids like sulfuric acid phosphoric acid organic acids like lactic acid and beta hydroxybutyric acid all these acids can be added to our body fluids which means at that time the ph will be less 
when the ph is less see here the pk of both these systems are more acidic which means they will be able to effectively compact that acid disturbance okay so this is how the buffers act inside the body fluids so we've seen two types of buffer system one is a bicarbonate buffer system and the phosphate buffer system now there's one more buffer system which is called the protein buffer system so we know that in our rbc we've got the protein which is called hemoglobin now proteins have a carboxyl group as well as an amino group so this carboxyl group will accept the h plus ions that means they will be the proton acceptors when acids are added while the amino group they will release h plus or they will be the proton donors when the base is added so here's the equation h plus that is a proton will combine with hemoglobin to form hhb right so that completes the basic buffers in the body fluid along with the uh, henderson hasselbalch equation so when such a question is asked you have to first write the introduction wherein you will have to write about the importance of uh, the acid base regulation then you have to write the different systems of acid base balance that is we've got body fluids the respiratory system as well as the renal system then you can move on to write about the different uh, important buffer systems that is bicarbonate buffer system and phosphate buffer system you have to mention about the henderson hasselbalch equation and also write about the protein buffer and you can write about some applied aspects like metabolic alkalosis or acidosis for to fetch more marks okay so i hope this concept is clear thank you